Hello and welcome to the University of Science and Philosophy. Today we will be briefly explaining the differences between the Russell Periodic Chart of the Elements and the Mendeleev Chart of the Elements. Here you see the Mendeleev Chart of the Elements. This was first published in 1869. It contains 118 elements by current modern day um, standards. It's arranged by atomic weight and it includes uh, a variety of information regarding whether an, a specific element is a metal or non-metal. Um, the noble gases are contained in a column on the right-hand side, and we see that hydrogen is um, the very first element of this chart. Here we see the Russell Periodic Chart of the Elements, number one. This was first published in 1926 in Walter Russell's book, The Universal One. It was originally published as a 10-octave chart, later revised to a 9-octave chart. It contains 121 elements, so more elements than the Mendeleev chart. Uh, the distinguishing feature of this arrangement of the elements is that it's progressing by its tonal positions within an octave. So we can think of the elements that Walter's depicting to be in every sense, musical tones. Um, for instance, the root note or the root of the key would be the inert gas elements, such as helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and so forth. And from these inert gas uh, tonal root notes, uh, the elements are projected or made to be harmonics of the fundamental so, for instance, carbon in its octave is the fifth uh, or amplitude of the root, and uh, then the other elements would be uh, divisions or multiples of the fundamental. So we can see a, a big difference in the way that the elements are arranged. Also to note, um, every element Walter Russell considered to be uh, metallic, excepting carbon, which is equally male and equally female or bisexual as he called it and that would that would mean that carbon is the only um, non-metal in this chart in chart number two we see the same information as chart number one it's just a different perspective so if we see back here in chart number one this is a really a side perspective view of a opening uh, vortex uh, or like seeing a tornado or or cyclone from its uh, side whereas in this chart number two we see that um, actually we're looking down from the top down into the cyclone or vortex very much like watching water go down your drain I'll also note here that uh, the elements in the hydrogen octave known as ethylogen and bibogen are actually the common day equivalent of uh, tritium and deuterium. Um, and that Nobel Prize was given to Urey in 1930 for the discovery of those elements, but Walter Russell had actually lectured um, to Union Carbide and Westinghouse and all the m major uh, universities and major corporations doing research into hydrogen at the time in the late 1920s and had actually predicted the existence of these elements. So he told them to sort of poke around in the hydrogen octave and they would find other elements. But of course, since they had numbered hydrogen as number one on their chart, they could not say that they had found other hydrogen elements, so they simply renamed them to tritium and deuterium, which are, um, in their science, would be an, an isotope. Uh, Walter Russell's version of isotopes uh, don't start to appear until the sixth octave uh, after scanadium and this is when we have a split tone which is what in Walter science we call an isotope so it's different from the modern science uh, view which is really an isotope would have a differing number of neutrons and a different atomic weight uh, Walter's version would be a split tone like what you have between uh, two white keys uh, of a piano, you have a black key, which is a split in between them. And finally, we see Walter gave us another way to look at his uh, arrangement of the elements, which is as a nine-octave harp. 
of the universe. We can look at this very much like the fretboard of a guitar and notice that carbon is in the exact midpoint and so carbon exists uh, halfway through the entire periodic chart. You can see it's exactly four and a half octaves to carbon from the first octave and exactly four and a half from the middle of the ninth back to the carbon is four and a half. So carbon exists exactly at the mid-tone or the midpoint or the fifth of the entire nine octave chart. And as such it's the only um, true sphere and the only true cube crystallized around it as its uh, cube wave field. It's the ultimate maturation point or point of uh, ultimate um, density and carbon also, as we know has the highest melting point at 3600 degrees centigrade. So we can think of all the elements mature from inert gas seeds toward carbon and then once we reach carbon we start to unwind and we throw out the heavier and heavier more dense elements such as um, plutonium and neptunium in the ninth octave and um, we always begin where we end so um, to begin again and so Walter's chart is sort of a an actual scientific way of showing the continuance of all the elements in their life cycles from their journey from birth to maturation to ultimately death to be reborn again. Well, thank you for listening and we really appreciate the attention paid to this chart. For more information, visit philosophy.org. Thank you. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back.